we will have oh. yeah we will have Leo Yanovsky from Hebrew University of Jerusalem, and he will tell tell us about the higher descent in chromatic chromatically localized algebra K theory. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Okay, right. Um, thank you very much for uh, the invitation to speak here, and thank you all for coming. Uh, let me share a screen. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to talk about what which one said, and uh, this is a joint work with three people, with Chai Ben Moshe, Shachar Carmeli, and Tom Rashlank, and I should probably say also that this is um, in progress. So, you know... We're in a fairly advanced stage of writing uh, writing the, the thing down, but should still be careful. Um, <clears throat> okay, so um, I think I will start by explaining a bit about algebraic K theory, uh, and then uh, slowly work my way towards the beginning of the title. So algebraic K theory is, um, uh, has there's there are various perspectives on algebraic K theory um, reflecting the somewhat uh, convoluted history of the subject, and um, I will present one uh, somewhat ahistorical narrative about algebraic K theory as like a quick uh, quick introduction for those who are uh, not very familiar with the idea. And uh, the the most basic uh, the most basic idea which underlies algebraic K theory is the notion of group completion. So say you have a commutative monoid M uh, and there is a way universally to turn it into an abelian group uh, simply by forcing the relations that will make it into an abelian group. Uh, and this is a very simple and classical construction. And from, from a more kind of abstract categorical perspective, uh, you can define it uh, instead of via explicit generators and relations, you can say the following thing, you have the category of commutative monoids, and you have the category of abelian groups, which embeds inside as a full subcategory. And this inclusion has a left adjunct, which is the precise categorical way of saying there is a universal process of turning a commutative monoid into an abelian group. And this functor is called group completion. Now, some examples to keep in mind, familiar ones. If you take the natural numbers with addition and you group complete, then of course you get the integers with addition. And this is a very useful operation of adding inverses because some interesting constructions and invariants in mathematics require subtraction. For example, uh, things like Euler characteristics and more uh, sophisticated versions thereof. But another example, which is also worth keeping in mind, is if you take the commutative monoid of natural numbers with the maximum operation, which is also a legit commutative monoid, and you try to group complete it, what you get is zero. So the, the point of this second example is to emphasize the fact that uh, adding inverses uh, adds not only new elements, but also some new relations. And these relations can have a very dramatic effect. Now, moving to homotopy theory, uh, from like the perspective of like infinity categories or any other perspective you might like on, on, on homotopy theory, the analog of a commutative monoid is what is uh, called an infinity monoid in spaces. So it's some kind of a homotopy coherent version of a commutative monoid. And inside those, uh, you have the so-called group-like infinity commutative monoids, which are the homotopy coherent versions of abelian groups. And this inclusion of a full sub-infinity category also has a left adjoint in the infinity categorical sense, in the homotopy coherent sense, which you should think of as a group completion. And this already, this uh, very uh, simple construction sometimes denoted by K-theory. It's the K-theory of the commutative monoid. And you should also know that group-like infinity monoid in, monoids in spaces is pretty much the same thing. It's an equivalent infinity category to connective spectra. So it's a way to produce a connective spectrum from a commutative monoid. So one uh, example to keep in mind is that um, if you take uh, the category of finite sets 
uh, has a co-product operation, which is the disjoint union, we can restrict to the full uh, to the subgroupoid, uh, maximal subgroupoid. If you just uh, discard non-invertible errors, you just take finite sets and isomorphisms, and you use what used to be the co-product, the disjoint union, as a um, uh, some operation. So interpreting this as a space, we can think of it as a disjoint union of classifying spaces of the symmetric groups, which are the automorphisms of the individual sets uh, with n elements with the disjoint union operation. Uh, if you take this thing and uh, you group complete it, then what you get is the sphere spectrum. So if you think about it, the connected components of this, of this space, which has only pi naught and pi one, the connected components are the natural numbers. This disjoint union operation on pi naught is just addition of natural numbers. And the group completion in the usual sense of this thing is the integers, but you have these pi ones, which record some higher homotopical information. If you take them into account, uh, it actually produces non-trivial higher homotopies in all degrees or many degrees. Uh, and it's a quite cool fact that what you get is precisely the sphere spectrum. So as you see, this in homotopy theory, this operation of, of group completing, because it adds both elements and relations and higher relations and higher relations, it's a quite a complicated operation and does something quite interesting. <clears throat> So if now R is a ring or perhaps a commutative ring, depends on exactly what type of construction you want to have, you can construct uh, a monoid of finitely generated projective R modules with direct sum. So this is some kind of an R linear version of this example of finite sets. Um, so you take this groupoid of finitely generated projective R modules with direct sum and you group complete it, what you get is the K theory of R. And more classically, people are usually interested, were you usually interested in the homotopy groups of this spectrum, which are called the algebraic K groups of the ring R. And those are quite interesting for many reasons. Uh, they, they appear in number theory and also uh, quite remarkably also in geometry. And even the K theory, K uh, groups of the ring Z, are uh, not completely known. So a lot of things are known about them and uh, pending on some, some conjectures in number theory, there is a conjectural description of all of them, but it's not completely settled yet. So this is a hard to compute environment. So it's an interesting, interesting yet hard to compute environment. And um, what makes it hard to compute or one, one reason it is hard to compute is the failure of descent. So what do I mean by descent? That suppose you have a Galois extension, Galois extension of rings, uh, which is some kind of a, well, you can think of a Galois extension of, of fields, but generalizes to commutative rings. Uh, then, then you have, a natural map from the K theory of R to the homotopy fixed points of um, the K theory of S. And um, many interesting invariants uh, in, in, in algebra, in algebraic geometry, uh, uh, satisfy that, that this map is an isomorphism. So this is called having Galois descent. But for K theory, this is usually not an isomorphism. And this failure of descent, among other things, is uh, uh, is one source, one reason for the difficulty for computing this this invariant. Now, um, one can observe that uh, even though I have defined this as an invariant of rings, actually this is a Morita invariant. So it's a uh, what what it means being a Morita invariant. It means that it depends only on the category of modules over R, and to, and and even more so, uh, it depends only on it's a derived Morita invariant. So it depends only on the derived category of modules over R. So it depends only on 
uh, what I will denote as perf R, uh, which is the, you take the derived category of R in the infinity categorical set, so not only the homotopy category, but the, the whole higher homotopical structure, and you take the compact objects. So you can either do it like classically by taking chain complexes, but then inverting in the homotopy coherent way the quasi-isomorphisms, or you, or you can go uh, infinity categorically all the way and just say uh, R is in particular a ring in spectra, which is a symmetric monoidal infinity category. So you can consider modules over R in spectra. So spectra with a module structure over the discrete ring R and take the compact objects. And more generally, you can construct the uh, K-theory uh, functor uh, on the categorical level. So if you consider the category, which I will denote cut perf, so this is a category of stable uh, item potent complete infinity categories, uh, there is a construction that takes such a guy and produces a spectrum uh, a connective spectrum, uh, if you're talking about connective K-theory or a non-connective spectrum, if you talk about the, the other variant called non-connective K-theory, but for our purposes, this kind of resolution is not very important. So there's this functor uh, with the property that uh, what uh, you get when you plug in perf of R uh, is just what we previously denoted as K-R. And the idea is uh, that to get K naught, you can get K naught of R by considering uh, uh, the abelian group generated by uh, classes of perfect uh, R modules. Um, and uh, you take the quotient by uh, the following relation. So if you have a of fiber sequence of R modules, then you declare uh, the class of M to be equal to the class of N plus the class of, well, maybe K is a bad name in this context. So let's call it L. <clears throat> and it is easy to check that this gives the correct K naught. And the idea is that you can uh, define uh, a, an infinity categorical, like a completely homotopy coherent version of this quotient uh, using the, uh, for example, uh, the S dot construction. So if you try to uh, enforce these relations on the free abelian group or the free spectrum generated by uh, perfect R modules, if you try to do the whole thing homotopy coherently, the kind of spectrum you get is precisely uh, a construction which satisfies uh, that when you restrict the perfect R modules, you get what we previously defined by group completion. So this more general construction is very interesting uh, because you can plug in um, other kind of objects which are not modules over um, classical rings. So for example, you can plug in modules over non-classical rings. Um, so for example, you can define, uh, if you take the sphere spectrum, and, and you take some loop space and you think of it as a homotopy coherent uh, group. And uh, then, then, then you can consider this spherical group algebra. What I mean by this is suspension infinity plus of loops A, where you use the loop, the, the group, the homotopy coherent group structure on loops uh, via concatenation uh, to get a multiplication ring structure on the suspension spectrum. And if you take uh, the K theory of that, then you get, well, maybe I shall use another letter, say X. X is a better name for a pointed space. This is Waldhausen A theory. And uh, even for the point uh, where you just compute the K theory of the sphere spectrum, uh, this is a very interesting invariant, and uh, it controls uh, a large amount, surprisingly large amount of um, concordance theory, like uh, trying to classify 
manifolds up to some some notion of equivalence and stabilization. And the map from the sphere to Z, which is just the zero to post-Nikov truncation, gives you a map from K theory of the sphere to K theory of Z. And um, K theory of Z has interesting uh, um, role in arithmetic and number theory and K of the sphere has an interesting role in geometry. So gives you quite an interesting connection between geometry and arithmetic. <clears throat> Right, so um, I should also mention that, that K theory can be um, was characterized using universal properties. Uh, so there are several approaches to that, but the most um, well known one is 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 um, was given by Bloomberg, Gepner, and Tabuada, who characterized it as a universal invariant, which is in some sense additive with respect to um exact sequences of um categories in cut perf okay now <clears throat> how can one uh, approach this question of understanding k theory um so we already said that it, it it doesn't have good descent properties it has some some descent properties but um less than what uh, we might hope to have and uh, one idea is uh, to use a certain filtration on the category of spectra or let's say uh, let's say we restrict ourselves to the category of p local spectra so this is not a very severe restriction and uh, the category of p local spectra has an interesting filtration uh, and the, the first term in this filtration are the rational spectra, so those on which P acts invertibly. And the category of rational spectra is rather simple. It turns out to be completely algebraic in the sense that it's just the derived category of Q of, of rational vector spaces. So those are the simplest ones. And it turns out there is a natural uh, filtration by objects which are roughly of increasing complexity and which I will denote by lower equal n. So maybe I should say uh, those are, this is lower equal zero. In between, there is something which I will denote by lower equal n. And uh, in the end, uh, we have this guy, which is. Uh, lower equal infinity. And more formally, what I mean by this spectral lower equal n, I mean the LNF localization of spectra. So um, I will not go into the details of what this thing precisely is, but I will mention a few facts. One can also talk about the successive quotients of this localization, uh, of this uh, filtration, and uh, by which I mean the uh, Verdier quotients. And the, uh, so the associated graded pieces are denoted by SPTN, where TN is an actual spectrum. Um, it's for those who know something about this theory, it's the, the telescope on a VN self map of a finite spectrum of type N, whatever that is. And as a result, one can also describe these categories as uh, Bausfield localizations with respect to uh, sums of these TIs from zero up to N. By the way, everyone's awfully quiet, and I really encourage you to ask questions and stop me and, I don't know, comment and whatever. Um, and, and like I said, um, this filtration is of like very roughly uh, of increasing complexity. Um, and one can ask how algebraic K theory um interacts with this filtration and following some computational evidence uh, uh john rognes and uh, christian uh, asani um conjectured 
uh, certain uh, very fundamental phenomena, uh, which uh, nowadays is called the redshift, redshift philosophy, which roughly says that uh, K-theory increases this, so this number N is called chromatic height, increases chromatic height by one. And uh, there are several interpretations of what this means exactly, uh, but um, one very strong version of this was proven recently uh, across two papers, uh, each with four authors, so I will not try to maybe write, spell the names, uh, but one is um, by uh, Land, Matthew, Mayer, and Tame, and the other one is by Clausen, Matthew, um, uh, Newman, and Noel. Uh, hopefully I got it right. Uh, so the two papers, uh, one is called um, something like purity in algebraic K theory, and the other one is called something like uh, descent and vanishing in algebraic K theory. And together they prove the following theorem. So for the following theorem, so this is L M M T plus um, what was it C M N N. Uh, they prove that uh, if T n localization of R is zero. This implies that the T n plus one localization of the K theory of R is zero. So, in particular, if all the if if uh, all the um, T i localizations of R vanish above some n, then all the T i localizations of K R vanish above uh, n plus one. And um, actually, so this proves that. This is a uh, redshift uh, by at most one, and uh, but but um, the other direction was proven as well. So, uh, as a consequence of um, the Nullstellensatz, chromatic Nullstellensatz, chromatic Nullstellensatz by um, um, Ellen, by Robert Brookland, uh, L, um, Thomas Schlank, and Ellen Yuan. Uh, if uh, Tn of R is not zero, then the Tn plus one of Kr is not zero. So this is, uh, together means redshift by exactly one. Um, <clears throat> right. So one can uh, attempt to study uh, K theory via these. Uh, so so we know that chromatic localizations of K theory. Um, at level one more than the chromatic support of the original ring is zero, uh, and one can ask what happens precisely at the first at the first new chromatic height. So if R is supported, say, if R is um, um, L and F local, one can consider the T n plus one localization. Of KR, so like the, the the new piece, which is not guaranteed to be zero, and it turns out that this localization of KR behaves uh, much better than um, K theory, like the general K theory functor. So when you try to compute the different chromatic pieces, uh, it reveals certain uh, phenomena that are uh, not seen. Um, uh, by the global the global functor. Um, and maybe I forgot to say, but um, this question of, of Galois descent, um, so uh, this question of Galois descent,
Um, so if you translate it into the behavior of the functor K on stable infinity categories, it assumes a much uh, simpler uh, form. So uh, basically what Galois, usual Galois descent tells you is that the category of perfect R modules is uh, equivalent to the homotopy fixed points of the category of perfect S modules. This is where you use the Galois condition. And then the question is whether this K theory functor got perf. The spectra, uh, it's uh, whether it preserves this um, homotopy uh, limit, this homotopy fixed point operation. And uh, and it doesn't, but but this is how you can phrase the failure of Galois descent. Sorry. Sorry? Sorry, I, I have a naive question. I mean, I, I mean, the rings, your your E1 or E infinity, I, I was lost. Uh, I mean, I mean, these theorems, I, I didn't mean now, I mean, the yeah, theorem. So, the, right, the so uh, you're right, I was a bit, uh, in. I was inconsistent or at least uh, vague about uh, uh, what exactly are the conditions, but um, um, in these theorems, R is infinity. Uh, but but you can also say things, uh, you can also say pretty strong things about uh, E1 rings. Uh, so for example, um, what purity tells you for E1 rings, it tells you that the um, T E N localization of KR depends only on the TN and TN minus one localizations of R. So this statement is true for, for an arbitrary E1 ring. Um, yes. Um, what, what about the later, I mean, Neustadt and um... Both also. Uh, uh, it's uh, also an, uh, okay. Yes. Yes, because, um, well, basically how, the th how this uh, application uh, of the null uh works is that uh, the chromatic null tells you that if you have an E infinity ring, um, which is, uh, whose TN localization is not zero, or you can start with the TN local non-zero E infinity ring, then it has an E infinity map into um, a Morava E theory of height n, right? So maybe if you already asked, maybe I will say something about this. This is a digression, digression. So uh, if LT and R is non-zero, there is a map to where this is Morava E theory also known as lubin tate theory. And, and then you know that um, K-theory of that maps to K-theory of Vn, and you can Tn plus one localize it. So it suffices to know that this guy is not zero, because a non-zero ring cannot be an algebra over a zero ring. Uh, so it suffices to know that this thing is non-zero, uh, which was already proved by a more specific argument by Alan Yuan uh, in the previous work. And of course, if your ring is not uh, infinity, it might not have a map to EN. For example, Morava K theory of height N has uh, its p torsion. So, uh, it cannot map uh, in a non-zero way uh, to anything, which is not Peter. So uh, yes, so this works only for e infinity. This last argument you can also you can still ask about whether the the redshift uh, is by exactly height uh, one for uh, e one rings. I think this is still open, uh, and 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 also the the original conjecture of Prognes and Asani um, um, also. Uh, discusses some um, possibility of having something something with of a controlled size at height infinity and uh, uses the notion of FP type and so on. So it also attempts to give a more 
uh, quantitative um, description of, of redshift. So there are some aspects of, of the redshift uh, conjecture philosophy which are still open, uh, but I think it's fair to say that I mean these works settle like a very, very large and impressive chunk of this, uh, this conjecture. So hope this answered the question. Uh, any more questions? Okay then. So, um, <clears throat> so it turns out that um, that the um, these these redshift phenomena, these uh, vanishing results, these chromatic vanishing results for K theory, are actually closely related to the questions of. So there's something in the chat. For E1, I think it's not open and false, but for other EKs, it is as far as I know. Okay, thanks, Maxim, for the comment. Um, <clears throat> okay, so, um, right, so what I started saying is that these uh, vanishing results for uh, chromatically localized K theory are actually very closely related to uh, descent to this the failure of of descent, and one of the main theorems of this uh, second paper I mentioned about vanishing and descent. So you can see it in the title uh, says the following thing. So um, suppose C is uh, not only in cut perf but in L and cut LNF, LNF, uh, we, by which I mean this is a full subcategory of cut perf, and it has the property that uh, for each two objects in C, uh, the mapping spectrum, so it's a stable infinity category, uh, it has a mapping spectrum between every two objects, so this thing is LNF local. So suppose I have such a category, and G, is a finite uh, P group um, um, acting on C, then I'm sorry, I have lost the connection to my remarkable. Let me try to reconnect. I apologize, I'm having some technical problems. Okay, we're good. We're back. Uh, then, if you apply, uh, so you have this map, so you always have a map from the uh, K theory of the fixed points to uh, the K theory, and then uh, fixed points outside. This is the, just the assembly map. It's true for every functor. There is, a, there is a comparison map. And this map becomes an isomorphism after Tn plus one localization. Um, so let me emphasize that the condition that G is a P group is essential here. This is this is not true. So in all this discussion, there is an implicit prime P. So all this filtration of uh, this chromatic filtration um, was associated to a specific choice of a prime P. And for a group of order prime to P, this is uh, can be easily seen to be to be false. Um, and uh, one way to think about it is that you have this category cut perf. And you have this functor k the spectra, then uh, you can uh, restrict LNF local categories. And then, so for these LNF local categories, when you map to spectra and then chromatically localize at some Tm, you know you get a zero above n plus one. So you just look at the first one, which is not. 
uh, zero for formal reasons. So you get this functor, which I will denote by k t n plus one. I'll probably not use this notation. Uh, and this functor k t n plus one uh, preserves um, homotopy, so like a equivalent formulation, equivalently. Uh, KTN plus one preserves uh, homotopy fixed points or finite D groups. Um, right. So finally, I can say about um, what's higher descent, so what is the subject of the, what's the topic of the project um, uh, on which I'm reporting. So a G action on an object is the same as a map from BG into C. So BG is the classifying space of the group G. Uh, so, and you can think of a functor from BG into C as uh, giving you a some uh, local system over BG of objects in C. And so like the base point correspond to some object X and uh, loops in BG uh, give you monodromy and uh, they correspond to elements of G and their uh, composition corresponds to product in G. So this is gives you a homotopy coherent action of G on X. And um, there is a generalization of spaces of the form BG, which have higher homotopy groups. So definition, so the space uh, X is, so let me say P finite. Uh, it means that um, um, has, uh, so pi zero of X is finite and uh, pi uh, N of X with any backs base point is a finite P group and it is also uh, truncated. So this is actually uh, zero for large N. Uh, so this is like, a, uh, so, okay, I allow several connected components. This is actually not a big uh, issue because all functors in sites are uh, semi-additive, so they take uh, co-products to co-products. So uh, this, this part of the extension is somewhat formal, but the more interesting part that I allow higher uh, homotopy groups. So I should think of loop A as a uh, homotopy coherent uh, higher uh, finite P group. And local systems on a should be thought of as objects with a homotopy coherent action of such a higher finite P group. And finally, the theorem of um, so Ben Moshe, uh, Romeli, uh, Schlank, and myself is that uh, KTN plus one. Uh, preserves limits indexed by uh, P finite spaces. So this is the higher analog of the descent result. Okay, so um, in the remaining five minutes, I want to say just a very few things about about the proof. So. Um, we want to show that this functor, KTN plus one, uh, preserves certain these uh, P finite limits. And um, actually the proof is not very complicated given, given the very strong results of these, these both papers of purity and vanishing and descent, plus a very modest amount of uh, a higher semi-additivity theorem theory. So this category of TN plus one local spectra is what is called infinity semi-additive. It means that uh, 
pi finite limits and pi finite co-limits actually coincide. So this is the analog of usual semi-additivity where co-products, finite co-products and finite products coincide. So they just buy products. And these byproducts give you a notion of addition of morphisms and so on. So this is like the higher analog of this when you replace uh, finite discrete spaces with pi finite spaces. And I will actually use only like the p-typical part, uh, which... Um, uh, in which I take only p-finite spaces the way I defined before. Now, had this category been also infinity semi-additive in the p-typical sense, then the situation would be very nice because then this property of preserving this type of limits, these p-finite limits, would be the analog of the property of a functor between two semi-additive categories being semi-additive. Uh, which is very nice because then preservation of this type of limits is equivalent to preservation of this type of co-limits. And, uh, and also, one is reduced to checking only preservation of the constant uh, p-finite co-limits. And both these reductions are uh, desirable. But the problem is that this category is not uh, infinity semi-additive, even in the p-typical sense. But it can be replaced by an analogous category in which I require all categories inside to have p-finite co-limits, but I also require all functors to preserve them. And there is a forgetful functor like this. Uh, and this forgetful functor, though, is not co-limit preserving. And it also has an adjoint, which is, you can think of them as formally adding p-finite co-limits without messing around with all the other structure that we have of having finite co-limits and stability and idempotent completion and so on. So, a large part of the argument, like more than half, basically, is saying that even though these categories are different, this Tn plus one localized K theory cannot see the difference. So like the point is that you somehow um, say that, well, you can compute co-limits in one category or the other category, and there is a certain assembly map, which is not an isomorphism, but its co-fiber is Ln minus one F local. So by purity, Tn plus one localized K theory cannot see the difference. So this is like one chunk of the argument is saying that you can work, instead of working in this not higher semi-additive category, you can work in this higher semi-additive category. And then when you work with this higher semi-additive category, when you compute, uh, consider the composition of Ktn plus one with you, so uh, you have the reduction from limits, from P finite limits to P finite co-limits and farther to constant uh, p-finite uh, co-limits. And you can further reduce to the case uh, where C is the category of modules over some, uh, uh, over some LNF local ring. So this is also p purely formal, like every stable infinity category can be filtered by module categories over rings which appear as endomorphisms, endomorphism rings of objects in it. And then you finally reduce the question to how, how this K, Tn plus one localized K theory uh, behaves on rings and a fundamental uh, observation in, uh, in this purity paper is that this functor preserves sifted collimates. And once you preserve sifted collimates, it allows you to perform a bar construction. So the argument is basically inductive. You uh, unwind pi one by the descent theorem in the vanishing and descent paper. Then you present your simply connected space as the bar construction on its loop space. And then you kind of proceed to uh, eliminate all the bottom homotopy groups one by one. So I know this is, was very fast and very sketchy, but I, I wanted to say something about the proof and not to leave it just with the statement. So it will not look uh, uh, completely mysterious. So I would say that um, infinity semi-additivity enters this, this, this argument uh, precisely in these two points of switching from limits to co-limits and reducing to constant things. And this reduction uses purity and then the inductive argument that you are left with uses, uses descent, the, 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 the one, one finite descent. And uh, the combination of all these three ingredients gives the proof.
So I will stop here. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you.